A cathedral stands here in the east instead of a mosque. Christianity shapes education and encourages industrial expansion in the eastern region. Large and small-scale trade flourishes along the Niger and Benue. New bridges provide links that weld distant areas together. The people now look to these rivers for irrigation and hydroelectric development, as well as for drinking water and swimming holes. Business and secretarial schools help the people of the eastern region to rush to meet the business world more quickly than the Islamic North. Oil was recently discovered in the east. Nigerians are developing their industry with their own research methods and their own hands. This eastern region of Nigeria is the only coal-producing area in all of West Africa. Eastern Nigerians utilize tribal and family groups to form trading firms and for purposes other than those for which they were originally intended. These family units become especially important in the absence of specialized groups such as those that Islam affords the North. Also unlike the North, the Easterners eat roots, yams and cassava. The higher rainfall in the East and West does not permit grain to ripen or cattle to thrive. The people in the East and West use palm oil for cooking rather than peanut oil, which is used in the north. Some palm kernels are locally processed, many more are exported. This region of Nigeria has long been the world's major source of palm oil. The first recorded shipment of oil of palm was in 1588, when a few casks were carried to England by a Captain Welsh. International trade has multiplied since the establishment of the Nigerian National Shipping Line in 1959. Just a few hundred feet from the hustle of Port Harcourt, the only harbor in the eastern region, the coast lies hidden in gnarled mangrove swamps. As in the eastern region, the climate and land of the west are sharply different from the north. The western region is mainly Christian, but has a larger Muslim element than the east. Despite religious and industrial similarities with the east, the western region has a unique historical background. As early as the 11th century, this region was the center of a flourishing art and culture. The ancient Yoruba kingdoms still knit the region together and determined much of the social life. Their splendors still influence present day art and design. Today, Nigerian artists combine modern trends with their rich heritage. African designs for public buildings, for houses, for entire cities are being realized today in Western Nigeria. Theater, no longer a luxury, is widespread. Television is extremely popular and spreading. 
This group, viewing a Nigerian television program, is from a Lagos public school. Development of communications and other marks of a modern nation have changed the face of the Western region. Cement now where thatched mud houses stood. How different the Christian East and West are from the Muslim North. Each of Nigeria's three regions has its own ancient traditions, and historically and culturally they have little in common. What then gave them the spark to form a federation? The idea of a federated Nigeria developed during the years of British occupation. Britain's relationship was always a polite one, typified by goodwill tours of the Queen or Prime Minister and little of the tension that has plagued some other African states. In 1861, Britain occupied the trading port Lagos to stop the export of slaves. Now, Lagos is the federal capital. Through the years of British guidance, Nigeria's trade developed. New mining and lumbering techniques were introduced and Nigeria became an important member of the world market. Ghana's independence came in 1957, but the turning point for all of Africa was 1960. 1960, Nigerian independence. From then on, Colonialism in Africa was, for all intents and purposes, history. The celebration was a tribute to both pasts, the traditional past and the colonial past. For some final words on independence, here is the Prime Minister of the Federation. 1960 is a very great year for Africa and for Nigeria, as we shall do everything in our power to continue to retain the friendship of our friends, the friendship of the African nations, and the friendship of the world as a whole. The English left behind the concept of one nation, a common language, English, and a government structure based on the parliamentary system. The task now, to combine the many different traditions and make Nigeria real. Lagos became the new nation's capital in 1960. Seats of government were established in each region. Kaduna in the Muslim north, Enugu in the east, Abaddon in the west. New and modern buildings accompany modified British procedures in government. Each region has a parliament and a prime minister, similar to the federal government. At each center of government, universities and hospitals rise. Soon, these institutions will be staffed entirely by Nigerians. Most Nigerians live better than they ever have before. They vote. With young people especially, the idea of unity is becoming meaningful. Education is the key to adding European methods to the traditional social and governmental forms. In the North, education centers around the teaching of the Koran and Islamic law. Islamic scholars are holy men, teachers or judges. They are held in high regard. This Arabic alphabet of the North, quite different from that of the Christian East and West, where education is the same type as in the Western world.
Increased number of trade schools introduced better agricultural methods and advanced machinery. Nigerians cling to traditions as they charge toward modernity. Expanding, tapping new resources. In the years since independence, Nigeria has been tabbed for leadership. Industrial methods are producing objects in new ways, while crafts of old are still very much alive. To combine the heritage of diverse peoples, to give reality to the new federal structure superimposed on the three regions by Britain, that is the task which faces these particular West Africans. The younger generation must keep the past alive and build for the future. The nation is large and important. One African in every six is Nigerian. 